What's up, guys? Uh, it's Mike Columbus and Felix Rodriguez with Texas Mixed Martial Arts. We're back, actually, for a special edition of the uh, Texas MMA podcast. This time, we're finally... I know you guys have been waiting. We're going to announce the results of the uh, official MMA awards, or the official Texas MMA awards, MMA edition. Um, this one is uh, a follow-up to our People's Choice Awards. This one's a follow-up to our People's Choice Awards, where... Everybody was voting, and there was a big deal on our group page with all the community voting on a bunch of categories. Well, these same categories, these are uh, more of a staff picks. We've consulted with a couple of experts. Basically, these are stats-based awards and you know subjective awards on our end in terms of who we think is a, the official um, winner for, for MMA. So with a lot of these, you might talk a little bit about them, but mostly it's going to be a listing of winners. And uh, congratulations to everybody that was nominated. You guys all deserve to win, in my point. But uh, somebody has to win, and we'll talk a little bit more about it. So just going on, um, or just uh, starting off with the uh, official Texas MMA Awards of 2014. Um, professional category, we've got the Texas UFC Fighter of the Year. Uh, Johnny Hendricks wins this one. He was 1-1 one one in 2014, but he won a UFC title. He won the welter, welterweight belt after uh, you know his tough fight with GSP, and after GSP stepping away, he beat Wally, Robbie Lawler earned that title, I think, in Dallas, right? Yes, sir. Hard uh, to go against that. Yeah, after Evan Tanner, I think he's the second Texas-based fighter to win a UFC title belt. I'm not sure if there's any other one. Uh, you fight nerds can correct me if I'm wrong, but that's quite a feat, considering Evan Tanner is a Hall of Famer. Moving on to the regional Texas Fighter of the Year. Um, these are the fighters that you know also come from Texas but still aren't in the UFC. We want to give them some publicity and congratulate them. Winning in a tough field this year uh, was uh, Damon Jackson out of Octagon MMA. He was 2-1 and one in... 2014, but his only loss was in his UFC debut, so he made it to the UFC this year, and uh, he won a legacy belt over Leonard Garcia in Dallas. So, um, what do you think of Damon? I think Damon is an excellent fighter. Like you said, his only loss was in the UFC. Uh, he is currently the lightweight champion or the featherweight champion for featherweight champion for legacy. Uh, as you guys know, if you follow the sport in Texas, if you win a legacy belt, that's usually a ticket to the UFC, so that should tell you the quality that he is bringing to the table. Pro Rookie of the Year, this was kind of easy to pick because we were just going by stats, and this guy won more fights than anybody else uh, as a rookie in a professional MMA in 2014. Aaron Reeves at a Metro Fight Club. Cool guy, so also his protege. Uh, also a very well-rounded person. He is a professional, very educated, uh, dude, very awesome knockout power. The times we've seen him in Legacy, he's really brought a good show. Uh, very well-deserved Rookie of the Year. Fight of the Year. This is totally subjective because there's a lot of fights um, that we saw that were great. A lot of fights that we didn't see that were great. But um, I think I have to give this one to Domingo Pilarde uh, taking on Kyle Machado, Legacy FC 27. Any fight that I get covered in blood and snot uh, is a good fight. And in this fight, I got covered in blood and snot. And it was... Fun and not fun at the same time. Kind of went like, Aah! kind of get a towel, but yeah, it was an awesome fight. Back and forth, beating the snot out of each other, literally fun. And you're talking about two prospects that you know both have a lot of promise, so that was an interesting one. Um, knockout of the year, we've got, you know, this was a hard one um, for the staff to pick, and it was actually just edged out in votes in terms of how many people we had on our little confidential panel. But uh, the runner-up was Ryan Hollis with his upkick of uh, Humberto de Leon. Uh, Freaking awesome, you know, finish in a fight that was destined to happen for a long time. But uh, the winner is actually Danis Salinas out of STFC, uh, STFC 29 in South Texas. He straight up crow copped Booker Arthur and knocked him clean out with a head kick. That's kind of hard to, to beat. That was nasty. Right leg hospital, left leg cemetery indeed. Congrats to Danny on that one. Uh, last uh, category in terms of this bracket of, uh, of, of winners. Submission of the year, um, pro male fighters. We've got Carlos Diego Ferreira winning um, with his uh, submission over Colton Smith at UFC Fight Night 44. Well deserved or not? Absolutely, without a doubt. That was one of the most beautiful transitions from judo to Brazilian jiu-jitsu that I have seen in a while. It was short, it was violent, it was sweet, it was technical, it's everything you want in a submission. And wasn't it in Texas? And it was in, in the UFC, and the UFC was in San Antonio. Can't get any better than that. Yeah, if Dana White and the uh, the brass at the UFC are willing to give you fifty thousand bucks for, for doing that, then we'll give you an imaginary award, which we're not even gonna pay for a trophy on. So here you go, bro. Congrats, Diego. Uh, on the women's side, we've got the pro uh, women's um, individual categories fighter of the year. We've got Tanya Evinger, who's 
you know, now a Texan uh, based out of Houston, uh, Gracie Baja Champions Forest. Invicta fighter. Invicta. Best Harry. record in, in, in 2014. Up and coming. You think she'll be in the UFC soon? Hard to say. I mean, Tanya is, you know, a veteran, and that's kind of a nice way of saying that she's, you know, been around the sport for a while. So if she can string along enough wins and be impressive in doing so, there's more and more opportunities for women in the UFC. So maybe she'll get there. Rookie of the Year, also training with Tanya, Stephanie Alba. Um, she had a rough go at his amateur, but I think she went 2 0 last year as a pro. Putting it together very well. Um, fighter or Fight of the Year, a fight we saw out in Midland 24 uh, 7. We've got. Uh, Jasmine Quesada taking on Montana Stewart and uh, beating Montana Stewart. So that was a good fight. Uh, I don't think you were there, but it was pretty cool, right? I thought that was actually an upset. Montana Stewart, is, I think she's 19 or 20. She's at a team takedown. Very talented fighter. I had her pick to win that one. I was very pleasantly surprised by Jasmine. Excellent fight. Knockout of the year. Last year for women, none. There was no knockouts. Uh, submission of the year, though. This is a, a close one. Uh, we've got Haley Hack um, and Tanya Evinger. And the, uh, the panel had to pick Tanya Avenger. Um, not only was it Invicta, but she submitted a jiu-jitsu black belt. So Haley's looked good and, you know, it was an impressive submission. But uh, both statistically and, and, you know, in terms of ramifications, Tanya wins. So two awards for her this year. Yeah, India Gomez is a hard person to submit, period. And, and for her to do it to her and in the state that she did, it's, it's hard to argue with that. Moving on to the amateur fighters. Fighter of the year at the amateur level, we've got Levi Miles. Um, 5 and 0 as an amateur in 2014. I think he's like he was actually 8 and 0 um, total as an amateur. He was in uh, he's got three titles to his record. Um, yeah, I mean those numbers are just hard to match. There's a lot of good amateurs, but you know Levi put out the numbers, right? And he's got a good mix of submissions and and uh, striking finishes, TKOs. On the women's side, we've got Catherine Roy out of uh, Bujitsu and and San Marcos or New Braunfels. She went 2-0 in 2014, also has a PGT title, PCG, Premier Combat Group title, to her record. Congrats, Catherine, on that one. Uh, fighter of the year on the male side. Fabian Galavez versus Tyler Flores at Cage Combat 16. That was a barn burner, wasn't it? That was back and forth. Pound me, pound you, hit me harder, I'll hit you harder. It was great. Sounds like one of your dates. Mm -hmm. Knockout of the year, we've got uh, Gustavo Gomez um, winning with his Cage Combat 18 knockout of Cal Villarreal. Uh, crazy fight. Kyle was actually dominating a lot of that fight, even though it was back and forth. They were trying to kill each other. Third round, as the fight was winding down, Gustavo, Gustavo pulled it out of his pocket and uh, got himself a title shot as a result. So congrats, uh, Gustavo. Submission of the year. Um, one that you know garnered like 300,000 um, views of video on our, just on our Facebook page alone. We've got Damian Orende. Um, was with Elite MMA. Now is with Atos. Um, armbarred Darius Gray, who just refused to tap. You must have really good insurance. Have you heard of tap or snap? That's what happened. He didn't tap, so he snapped. On to the rest of our uh, MMA awards, team categories, a bunch of other coaches of the year awards, you know, events, stuff like that. Um, team of the year. Uh, team Takedown had a UFC title to their record, and they've got a rookie of the year in Mark De La Rosa, but this one had to go to Octagon MMA. Sheer volume and quality. They've got, I don't know, maybe like five or six or seven UFC fighters on the roster. They've got... Guys that have won titles in Legacy, fighting in all these other promotions. They've even got some amateur guys going. They've got uh, guys now part of the team that were part of other major teams, like Jason Sampson, um, Cameron Couch, even as an amateur, moved over there, now as a pro, CDF. won his pro debut. Um, Carlos Diego Ferro is now training there. It's hard to beat them um, in terms of you know the overall team category. Give a nod to the guys out of Houston, like Four Ounce and everybody else, but Octagon wins it in 2014. I think it's their second year in a row, so congrats to them. Um, moving right along to the MMA Coach of the Year, uh, it kind of follows logic. If you win Team of the Year and who's your coach, it's safe. Saad, um, head coach of MMA and an Octagon, a hard driver, man. You seen? You ever seen Coach like next to the cage? He's serious. Like, he's screaming at his guys. Kind of scared of him, actually. Well deserved win for him. So congrats on the uh, team and the Coach of the Year coming out of the same gym, Octagon MMA. Um, striking Coach of the Year, actually two guys. Um, Furon's Fight Club is Bob Perez. And Michael Chase Corley out of Houston Muay Thai. Two other guys that people travel from out of town to train with, like uh, Levi Miles, who won uh, Amateur Fight of the Year. You know, getting ready for the pros and in the pros, he's actually came up to Houston to cross train with them. Legacy kickboxing. There's a lot of pros that you know used them as a home base when they came here, and uh, they've got a lot of guys going through that gym right now. I mean, it's hopping. That is a pretty good school. I was just there actually filming a technique of the week coming soon with Michael Chase Corley. Uh, at any given point, you're going to have three, four, five professional fighters there. 
a lot of movement, a lot of people coming in and out, like Mike said. Excellent, excellent, excellent instructors in Crew Bob and Chase. Chase is actually a guy that's fought in Lumpini before. Super talented guys, excellent coaching staff over there. Good deal. Uh, next one up, um, Comeback Fighter of the Year. Went to uh, formerly known as the Banana Man, but now is just an impressive pro fighter. Um, fe uh, not featherweight, flyweight, Ryan Hollis. Um, he was 4-1 in 2014 after three losses in uh, 2013. So congrats to Ryan on that one. Next up, uh, we've got the Breakthrough Fighter of the Year. Um, Chaz Skelly out of uh, Dallas, Keller actually. He got uh, two UFC wins in, one, in a one-month span um, after accepting those fights in, in short notice, and they were in the UFC. And some cheese to show for his efforts, because I think he got a nice little bonus in one of those fights, too. So Chaz is definitely another one of the Texas um, fighters to watch out for in the UFC. Starting to climb his way up that divisional ladder, he's about to be a contender, so congrats to Chaz. Iron Man Fighter of the Year, back to Hollis. Ryan Hollis wins two MMA uh, awards this year, Texas MMA awards. Five fights, man. Normally, in the last couple of years, it's been Rachel Hillow. But this year, this past year, Ryan got the nod for most fights. So congrats to Ryan again for his second award this year. Turning it around, man. He had a shitty 2013, and his 2014 has been nothing but impressive. Right. So we'll see if he continues that at Legacy. Um, or let's we'll see if he did continue that Legacy, depending on when this comes out. Um, next up, Pro Event of the Year, we've got Legacy Fighting Championship 37. Um, you know, a lot of times for this award... You, it, it's going to be a legacy because that's where all the top fights happen in Texas that are not UFC. And this is a Texas award, right? So it's almost like picking which legacy is the best one. But we still do apples to apples. We looked at STFC. We looked at XKO. Um, some of the stuff we look at is number of fights, significance of those fights, and how those fights actually ended so we can kind of gauge fan experience and, you know, were they, uh, should they have been entertained based on the quality of the action that night? And another intangible called the oh shit factor. Legacy FC 37 had 11 fights, 9 finishes, so, you know, they're uh, well-deserved. That event was well-deserved. Um, Amateur Fighter of the Year, another thing that was hard to beat statistically, Cage Combat 18 happened in December. 15 fights, which is awesome for a card. Fans would love that many fights. Uh, not only amount of fights, they weren't bored because there's 12 finishes. And 3 title fights. And 3 title fights. So, I mean, how do you beat that? If that's like a, you know, not to uh, Eric uh, and Jace... Um, on that one, so congrats to them. Uh, story of the year, there's actually two. One was really good, and one was really bad. Uh, the official winner is the good, because we're going with good, and that was Johnny Hendricks winning the UFC title, and it's always badass to see somebody from uh, Texas winning. So congrats to Johnny. The bad, big, talk, big dog promotions. Uh, you want to tell them a little bit about that? <sighs> What's that guy's name? Richard Vasquez? Richard Vasquez big from dog. Big Dog. Um... He, let's just say, did not have enough money to cover the event. He was depending on fighter ticket sales, which, you know, is a whole other topic that we might actually have to cover one day. Uh, he didn't have enough. One of the fighters, I believe Mike Bronzolis, had a certain amount of tickets. He was going to get taken off of the card, allegedly. This is all hearsay, by the way. We weren't there, so we're just relaying what we heard from uh, our sources. And Mike, being the veteran that he is... Uh, decided to hold on to his ticket sales until after the fight in order to guarantee his purse for doing the work, selling the tickets in order to fight. Because he was one of the higher... Uh, he didn't want his people to lose his money too if he didn't get it. Exactly. Fight. And uh, needless to say, the... Can I say douchebag? Well, let's just say that the event got canceled. The people didn't get their money back. Um, the fighters had to give their fans the money back, whatever they could. But let's just say that uh, a lot of people didn't get paid that night. Uh, event got canceled. Um, Fans' time got wasted. Community's time got wasted. So I don't know if this guy's ever going to be promoting again. But if he does, we'll definitely let you know. Um, so that's the story of the year officially. It goes to Johnny Hendricks. So congrats, Johnny. Promoter of the year. You want to guess who it is? His name rhymes with Rick Raynard. And yeah, yeah. So it's uh, It's from like New Zealand or something? Tasmania? He's Australia? Got, he's got 50 kids. Is he Mormon? Yes, that one. That one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jamie Nick Blue Eyes. Mick Maynard. That one, that one. That's his name. I don't, it's going to be hard for anybody to beat Mick. I mean, he not, he not only he's put on volume shows, he puts on quality shows. Um, he cares about the fans. And, uh, you know, he generally is the type of guy that has a good relationship with everybody. Very dreamy blue eyes. Yeah, so... Um, get lost in them. And great, great wife who, you know, really works with him to run Legacy. Um, so congrats to Mick and Andrea, um, promoter of the year. 
state official of the year. Basically, this is kind of um, for referees and judges. It's a uh, one of those you know things that's entirely subjective. Um, but one thing we look at is you know what controversies did we hear about you in during the year? The significant amount of um, fights you fought, you've you've refed, whether it's title fights or big events, and just generally um, perceived public perception of you. Um, this year, the award goes to Jake Montalvo. This award is kind of the opposite of, in terms of criteria of all our other awards. The less we hear from you in this award, the more likely you are to win. The more we hear from you as a referee, the probably chances are you did something controversial or there is something that was not right with your performance as an officiator. So big ups to Jacob Montalvo, Harlegen BJJ, if you're ever in the Rio Grande Valley, check them out. I think it's the second year of the, in a row too. Another one is our MMA brand um, sponsor of the year, another subjective award. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, companies doing great things for uh, athletes, especially in fighting uh, in Texas. We had to defer actually to our People's Choice Awards, and uh, you know, War Chop Gear won it there, so we're just gonna move that over here. So they won People's Choice, they're gonna win our award this year. So congrats to War Chop and uh, their owner, Randy Olson. Um, the last two awards are, are two really special awards to us. They may not be, um, you know, the type of awards that you talk and argue about on a daily basis, but they mean a lot. One is the 2014 Community Service Award. Um, it goes to the Dog Foundation with uh, Jeremy Mahone, um, former owner at a Four Ounce Fight Club, active trainer in Houston, and a recently retired fighter. He started up an organization basically to help returning veterans with PTSD by, um, you know, helping them transist uh, with the uh, assistance of service dogs. Um, so... You know, congrats to Jeremy. He just started that last year, but he's already a 5013C. He has a, a lot of community um, support. And really, here at Texas MMA, we, we're never, ever going to go against um, anything that helps veterans. So congrats to Jeremy. We love our veterans, man. Lifetime Achievement, Texas MMA Hall of Fame. Um, past inductees of this award were, uh, you know, it's, a, it's kind of like a mythical Hall of Fame. Eventually, a lot of great people are going to be in here, but we like to give it to one person a year. Just to kind of build this slowly, right? So past inductees include um, Steve Armstrong. Um, we've got Six and John Jira. We've got Guy Metzger. And uh, didn't Hawk Hardy win too? No, Hawk was Hawk Hardy did win, but that was Jiu Jitsu. Oh, that's right, that's right. So this year we're putting in Eves Edwards. Thug Jitsu, ladies and gentlemen. Not only was he a, a, a UFC champion, he was also one of the first great lightweights. He's recently retired after wrapping up a great career. And not only all that stuff in the UFC, but he was also one of the early guys fighting in, uh, fighting in Renegades with Saul Solis, who's sure to be in this um, you know, company of people. He's already there. We just haven't put him in yet, but Saul's definitely a legend too. Give us time. Yeah, he was, he was there. So, you know, Eve Edwards, we had to give it to one of our UFC greats fighting at Texas. So that wraps up the uh, MMA side of the uh, UFC, or not the UFC, but the Texas MMA Awards. Um, the official edition. We hope that um, you guys appreciate it, and uh, we definitely appreciate you know giving this type of attention to everybody in our community. But like we said, this one was stats based, so we wanted to balance out with the people's choice, which is you know popularity based, and uh, we wanted to basically honor everybody. So everybody that was a finalist, anybody that was even mentioned in these awards throughout the whole process, congratulations! You guys are doing great things. Definitely pillars of our community, and uh, except for Big Dog and. Um, you know, we appreciate you. So thanks, guys. And if you disagree with one of our choices, uh, you can voice your concerns at 1-800-IDGAF. Thank you.